plans for this engine came from this book, Philip Ducos's engine. And uh, he has some very good uh, shop hints in here, and there's two engines that I've built. It's a six cycle oddball, and I've built this engine, and I've used quite a few of his shop tips, and they're very good. This is a good book. Uh, if you don't have it, maybe you should get it and uh, read through it, because I learned a lot from him. This is the third version of this engine I've built, and uh, I've made a few changes on this one from the last one. Uh, I, I stuck with some of the changes I did before. First was the magnetic gas tank. It's very nice to be able to pull this gas tank off, un take the cover off, shake the thing out, and blow it out after shows, and it gets it really clean which is quite important because if crud gets in the bottom of that tank it causes problems. The second change I did on this one was I added weights, counterweights, to the crankshaft. As you can see it's just a simple round piece with a slot in it and it's slipped over the end with held on with one bolt. It makes a big difference in the vibration. The original one had no counterweights whatsoever. And a lot of my other engines had counterweights and they ran smoother and so I thought I'd try it and it really made a big difference. The flywheels are from uh, Martin Patton model. They're heavy duty curved spoke flywheels, five inch, and they work really good. The heavier the flywheel, the slower you can make it run, of course. And uh, I like to get the engines running as slow as possible. I'll run this after this uh, video showing it. Uh, other than that, and of course, if you go to the other video, you'll see I, I made cylinder heads on it. I didn't follow the directions very close. I, I added a cylinder head. I moved the uh, exhaust valve and intake valve mechanism forward and put a different carburetor on it. And I made the muffler a little bit different just for the looks. This uh, hopper, as I said in the other video, is made out of two by two uh, box beam, eighth inch thick, and it's just sawed on a V and uh, silver braze back together. I thought it was pretty important to show you the ignition system and the way I did that, because it's not a set of points in this. I use Hall effect ignition in almost all my engines because oil gets on the points and they foul out and so forth. You use a Hall effect, which is pretty easy to get. Uh, it uh, works much better, maintenance free. So I'm going to take the flywheel off and show you how I did this. I followed the main plan with the uh, little advancing and, and the retired lever behind the flywheel, which is in the same place, except I didn't put points there. What I did was I put a little disc. It's got a magnet on it right here. You can see it. Behind the magnet is the Hall Effect sensor, just mounted on this little thing. So it's actually the sensor that moves back and forth for advanced and retired. And it's a pretty simple system, and I've had uh, really very good luck. I didn't show you before was uh, when you can remove the gas tank, which is quite easy, like that. Then you can take the engine turn it right upside down and do any work you want on the bottom. As you can see here, everything is exposed and easy to work on. Oh, it changed the batteries or whatever you have to do. I used to make a draw that went in here, which was quite difficult to do because it would have to plug in in three places and make good contact. This way, all the wiring is solid and this, the only plug here is for the, remove the battery pack.
That's it. I hope you enjoyed it.